Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle with Damn Fancy Creations, and today I have another fun scoop tutorial plan for you guys. I love making these scoop tumblers. I think they are so fun to make. Um, I just have so many ideas, so many different scoops that I want to make that I just try to crank them out before I forget them. So today's theme is going to be mermaid and I'm going to be using several different techniques, which is, you know, I'm going to be using a mold, poxy sculpt, sprinkles, drips, glitter, all that kind of stuff. And that is one reason why I like making these scoop tumblers because you get to use so many different techniques for one tumbler and I really like that. So if you guys are ready to see how I make my mermaid scoop tumbler, let's get started. <music> All right guys, so we're basically going to start with a spray painted tumbler. This one has already been prepped and spray painted. My video cut out when I was filming, so I do not have me spray painting the base, but I basically just picked some dark pinks and purples that I thought would look good with my bronze spray paint and bronze armor art. And then we are going to move on to the next step, which is applying our rose gold holographic scales i really really like this color um in person it did not look as holographic as it does on the video unless it hit the sun but the pink color that the vinyl is really really went well with the pinks and purples that i picked out and i am basically just going to apply them all over the cup in random areas i don't get super picky about where I put them. I just kind of place them wherever. I don't even use transfer tape. I just peel them off with my fingers and press them down on the tumbler. And I did want some areas to be left blank. So you will see as I turn the tumbler around, I really just kind of focus on a few areas to lay the scales. I don't want the entire cup covered with them, but I do want these scales noticeable. They will be peeking through our power wash that we are going to do. And then when you're applying your scales, reserve some for later because I did go back and apply some, just a few little scales um, basically on top of the power wash just to make them pop a little bit. So I'm glad that I did save a few. So basically we are going to apply our scales all the way around the tumbler and if you want to add more or less than what I do that is totally fine. There's no right or wrong way how to do this and after you're happy with your scales we are going to put this on the turner and apply a layer of epoxy so the Dawn Power Wash has a nice smooth surface to adhere to and it's not going to affect the vinyl or paint that is already on the tumbler. And I will say another reason why I like to epoxy first four cups like this is so if you mess up like I did, you can take that paint off with a um with acetone. So basically for the Dawn Power Wash method, we are going to spray the Power Wash onto the tumbler. And then we are going to spray paint on top of this. And you have to keep in mind that wherever you spray the Dawn Power Wash, the paint will not touch. 
This always reminds me of like a crayon resist painting. I don't know if you guys have ever done that. I used to do it with my five-year-olds um, when I used to teach. Basically, you draw with a white crayon and then you paint on top of it and the white crayon resists the watercolor paint. So this is pretty similar to that technique. Um, and you guys can see I obviously did not use white on my finished tumbler. I just am using this video because it was the best angle. Um, I did not like the white that was on it. It looks okay in this video, but in person I really didn't care for it. So I ended up just taking a paper towel and acetone and wiping it off and starting over. So that is another good thing with this technique is if you don't get it right the first time, you can always start over. So this is the second attempt that I did. The angle is not the best, which is why I included the first video, but I decided just to go with bronze. I really just liked the bronze and pink colors together. I, the white was just too much of a contrast than the look that I was going for. And you guys can also see you don't need a water hose or anything. You can just take a cup of water or your watering can and dump it on top to get the power wash off. So this is after the spray paint has dried. And I wanted a little bit more of the scales kind of peeking through. So I just took the leftover scales that I had and basically applied it on top of the scales that were already there. So it gave a cool effect where some of the scales were covered with the spray paint and some of them were not. And I was finding some scales that I did not remove. This cup was definitely a process. I was changing my mind throughout the entire thing. I'm sure you guys have cups like that. But, you know, all these... Uh, changes and mistakes and mess ups that we do really just um, help us get better. So after I added those other few scales, I did epoxy again on top of the spray paint and the scales. And now I am going to go and add some gold leaf. And I typically apply my gold leaf with a glue stick. And for this particular tumbler, I am just kind of dabbing the glue stick in places because I don't want huge chunks of gold leaf. I kind of just want distressed spots throughout the cup just to give it, you know, a little bit more interest. And if there were any bare spots where it was just spray paint showing, then I did add some gold leaf there. And I really just went around the entire tumbler and put gold leaf where I thought needed it. I do like to work with the sheets more than the flakes. You guys can tell that if you've watched some of my videos already. So you're basically just applying some glue in random areas and then dabbing the gold leaf onto the glue. And obviously once this gold leaf is dry, or the glue stick is dry I shall say, then I will take a bristle brush and kind of distress it and brush off any flakes that may not be attached. And once everything is dry, I will typically seal my gold leaf with a clear spray and then I will epoxy it 
one more time. So while my cup is curing with epoxy, I am going to go ahead and make my scoops. So I use Poxy Sculpt, Pam, we're going to use Bronze Armor Art, and an ice cream scoop. So to make the Poxy Sculpt mixture, we are basically going to roll out equal amounts of part A and B. I usually do three scoops, so I will put one part in my ice cream scooper and think, okay, that equals one and a half scoops. And I will do the same for the other part. So one and a half scoops plus one and a half scoops will be three scoops. <laughs> and you will see how I mix this. I don't get my fingers all in it. I really just try to fold the edges into the center and flatten it out. So it's more of a folding or kneading motion than just kind of squishing it all together. And I will point out, I did not film myself um, making the tail because I have tons of them already made up. But for the mermaid tail, you just need a mermaid tail mold. You can get whatever size you want. I think the one I used was the three inch one. And I just mixed some mica and glitter and made my tail. So now that the Poxy Sculpt mixture is pretty well mixed, you can kind of tell one part is a slightly different color than the other. Um, so once it kind of becomes a creamy white color, it's pretty mixed. And then I will start folding in my bronze armor art. And you guys can see that for this scoop, I really just kind of folded it like taffy because I didn't want the color super mixed in. I wanted a little bit of streaks to give it more interest. And then I will spray my scooper with Pam and scoop out one scoop. I find that spraying my scooper with Pam before I scoop my Poxy Sculpt really helps it release a lot better than if you don't. <laughs> it pretty much gives you the perfect scoop every time. And if you are going to add something large like this to your epoxy scoop, then I would suggest kind of deciding where you're going to place it before you finish scooping everything. So I kind of placed mine behind where I knew my hole would be and then placed my last scoop. And then you can kind of move it around, maneuver it, um, get it exactly the placement that you want. And when the epoxy sculpt was cured, I did go back and drizzle a little bit of clear epoxy around the tail just to be sure it was held in place. So now that our tumbler is cured, I did sand it again to make sure everything was smooth, just kind of a light sanding all over. And now we are going to make our drips. So for our drips, I used a little bit of bronze armor art and I mixed in a champagne glitter. The glitter was kind of last minute decision. Um, I did add the glitter because I didn't want everything to be bronze, bronze, bronze. So the glitter kind of helped break up that bronze that the entire cup was. And another thing to keep in mind, I typically use Nice and Thick by CCDIY. It really helps me get the perfect drips every time. You're not waiting forever and forgetting about your epoxy and have it cured and hard and you won't be able to use it. So Nice and Thick is really great. The only thing I will say is that 
it does or it can change the color of your epoxy. If you use nice and thick straight into epoxy with no colors it would have like a milky white hue. So basically whatever color you add to epoxy is going to have a milky white hue. So it lightened the bronze quite a bit which is why I added the glitter. I think this is when I decided to add some more armor art just to try to brighten it back up a little bit, but it didn't quite get back to that metallic-y bronze that I wanted. Sometimes I actually really like that um, Nice and Thick does that. It really gives me a nice caramel effect when I'm doing my coffee cup drips because the milky white hue makes the caramel or the drips actually look like caramel. Um, and for some reason, it doesn't do this when I use mica. Mica tends to keep its hue nicely. I use cocoa craze that you can see sitting in the background here, and it always has a nice dark hue. I think it's just for more liquid colors, nice and thick tends to affect like armor art or dispersion colors or acrylic paint, which I typically don't use. So I did like the look that the glitter gave this, so I continued with my nice and thick and glitter. And I do get questions a lot from people about asking if you have to babysit your cups after you do drips. And I do not. I do not apply my epoxy for drips until my mixture is pretty thick. So if you apply your drips when the epoxy is really thick, then you aren't going to have to constantly watch it. Now for my scoops, I applied my drizzle before it got too thick because I still wanted it to have that kind of dripping effect like actual syrup or caramel sauce. So that is it for the scoops. <laughs> I just wanted to add a little bit on there just to give it some, just something fun instead of just plain scoops. But this mixture is still too thin to apply to my cup. So I will keep mixing and keep adding nice and thick. And some people have said that they have tried nice and thick and they just can't get it to work. But I will just say that you do have to add a good bit of nice and thick in order for it to thicken your epoxy. It's kind of like you add and add and add and then all of a sudden it gets really thick. And it may seem like you're adding a ton of nice and thick, but since it has a powdered sugar-like texture, it's really not as much as you think it is. I mean, you can shake that container back up when you're done and it will still look full. And just some tips with nice and thick. Sometimes there can be little clumpy spots in there. So I will just take my popsicle stick and press it against the side of my mixing cup just to kind of flatten out all those little bumps. 
So I will test this on my mixing cup just to see how runny it is. And this one is about ready. I know it's time to apply when I can apply it to the side of my mixing cup and don't get a lot of movement. So now I'm ready to apply it. I will basically just take my mixing stick and just do a thin line of the epoxy at the top all the way around the tumbler. And then to apply the drips, I will take a look at the tumbler and see where the natural drips are starting to form and then add a small dab of epoxy. And I will do this all the way around the tumbler. And if you want longer drips, you will add more epoxy. If you want smaller drips, you will add just a tiny bit of epoxy. And once the drips are cured, we are going to apply the vinyl. I always use transfer tape with lines because it really helps me line everything up. And if I had a smaller sheet, I probably would have done this in sections, but I only had a larger sheet in my kitchen. So I just attached everything and then tried to do it one line at a time. I find it a lot easier to match up one or two lines exactly versus the entire quote. So I will press down the words on the bottom or the bottom vinyl and just slowly lift it off. I don't try to press down the transfer tape onto the bottom vinyl so it doesn't get picked up. So I will just use like a vinyl backing, <laughs> like you guys can see, just so my um, transfer tape doesn't stick to any of the other vinyl that I don't want it to stick to. And for some reason, this T was not lining up like I wanted it to. I don't know if the vinyl shifted or what was going on with that. So I just kind of peeled it off and stuck it down with my fingers versus the transfer tape. So now that I have all of my vinyl laid down, I am going to and pick it all up. I did get a paint pen and a toothpick because my little eye dots went missing. Story of my life. Um, so I typically will just touch it up with a toothpick and a paint marker.
And sometimes this metallic vinyl can be a pain to get off, but it's worth it because it's so pretty. And I just lined it up in between some of my drips. I will typically line up the top line of the transfer tape with my tumbler and move it down to where I want it. And I will press one side down and then press the other side down. If one side is having trouble lying flat, then I will slowly peel up the other side and then smooth down the other side. So now I'm going to show you guys how I touch up my eyes since they like to escape every time. I was fixing this letter really quick because I did notice that it was not as straight as I would want it to be. So I just slowly lifted it with my blade and then smoothed it down. So for my eyes, I will just pump out a little bit of paint from my paint pen. And then dip just the tip of my toothpick in it. And make a dot. That is pretty much it. So now that this cup is finished, it will go back on the turner for a final layer or two of epoxy. While we attach our scoops to the lid. So the very first thing we're going to do is drill a hole in our scoop. My epoxy sculpt scoops is usually cured um, in about 12 to 18 hours, depending on the temperature. And I always make my hole in the flattest scoop. So I will flip my scoop over, hold the lid against it, and kind of plan out where I want it to sit. And then I will take a pen, marker, anything I can, and just mark the spot where the straw hole is going to be. <clears throat> And of course, when I got it all mapped out, I couldn't open the paint marker. <laughs> so I basically just touch where I want my straw hole to be. Just like that. And that is where we're going to drill our hole. So I always drill straight. I don't drill at an angle because if you drill at an angle, then your hole and your straw is not going to match up as well as you want it to. You'll have a difficult time trying to get the straw down through the scoops and into the straw hole. And yeah, we are basically just going to drill right through. I just kind of pulse my drill because I don't want to drill really fast and then, you know, mess up on the hole and then the scoop be ruined <laughs> because that would not be good. And there's our straw hole, perfectly smooth. So I will show you guys just kind of how I put it together. 
So that is basically what it will look like once everything is together. So I always just check it out um, before I attach the magnets just to make sure that everything looks good and is lined up how I want it because you can always change everything until it's permanent. So I will show you guys how I attach my magnets. And the first thing that I'm going to do is get my magnets ready. I will use 10 by three magnets or 10 by five magnets, depending on the lid and how the scoops sit. The 10 by five magnets are obviously going to be a little bit taller. So if you need that extra height to grab the scoops, then they're good to use. So you guys can kind of see the difference here. Or you can use a combination of both, one 10 by five, one 10 by three. I just like to have two different sizes on hand just in case I need them. And, you know, I have done several of these before, but I, if you need to know where to put them, you can always put two magnets on the lid and hold the scoop to the lid and see where the magnets touch the scoop. And that is where you are going to want to apply your magnets. So I typically apply all of mine towards the upper back. And you can see that the magnets slightly poke up. I'm trying to show that in the video. <laughs> so if they slightly poke up, that is definitely good because your scoop will have something to grab onto. And these are super strong magnets. You can see me like struggling to <laughs> try to separate them so I can use them. They are really, really strong. So if your scoop is on there and you know, your cup turns upside down, that scoop is not going anywhere. And I have started taking my blade and scuffing up the spot where my magnets are going to be attached. I have used liquid fusion, um, regular, just plain epoxy, and sometimes they do pop off, which is not good, obviously. So, but now um, I have started scuffing up the surface of the lid. I just score it a few times with my blade. I will show you guys what it looks like. That way the epoxy has something to grab onto because the lids of the tumblers are such a slick plastic that I think it has trouble adhering to it. I don't do this for my scoops because the epoxy sculpt and regular epoxy seem to bond really well together just in general. So you guys can see I just scored the areas where my magnets are going to go. And I would just place them on top just like that. So now if I can get them separated, <laughs> I will show you how I attach them. So I'm doing two lids here um, just because I needed to get two of them done. Both lids have been scored and I will typically just take leftover epoxy and just put a little dab on there. I do wait for the epoxy to thicken just a little bit so it's not super, super runny. So it's more kind of like a gelish texture.
and then I will just take my magnet and just lightly press it down into the epoxy. I don't smush it all the way down um, just because that epoxy does help it give a little bit more height. And this one needed a little bit more epoxy on one side. And then we are going to do the same thing with the other lid. And once this dries, we will attach the other magnets. So don't try to attach the magnets while this is still wet. So these magnets are now cured. They are hard, they are stuck on there, they are not going anywhere. So we are going to put our second magnets on top of the first one. So now they are stacked. And we are going to put a dab of epoxy on top of these magnets. Then we are going to take our straw. I'm moving this so you guys can see what I'm about to do. We are going to put our lid onto our tumbler. I'm using the tumbler that it's going on. Sometimes I just use a regular tumbler if the tumbler is still curing. So we're going to put the straw through the scoop and then into the cup. And then the scoops are sitting on top of the magnets that have epoxy on it. And that is basically it for the scoops. Once this dries, you can then remove the scoops. Two magnets will be stuck to the scoops and two magnets will be stuck to the lid. And I will show you guys what I do to the scoops after I remove them, which is just kind of reinforce these magnets with a little bit of epoxy around the sides. So I will literally take one drop, maybe two drops of epoxy and just kind of go around the magnet. This way it just helps form a stronger bond to the epoxy sculpt. And then once this epoxy dries, your topper will be good to go. And that is pretty much it, guys. I'm going to show you guys some finished pictures of what it looks like. Um, I love how this tumbler turned out. It's just a classy take on a mermaid tumbler, which I loved, and the girl who received it loved it as well. If you guys enjoyed this video or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group on Facebook, which is linked in the description. Thanks for watching.